Hello, Auggies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kastler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we're going to finalize the construction of the uh, QCX Mini and uh, just put it all together. I've already done the calibration. The calibration works fine. It's just a matter of uh, turning the uh, uh, nuts and stuff nuts the resistors and the capacitor back and forth to get the thing to work properly. What I have not done is go through and optimize the transmitter. Right now it just transmits one watt. But let's take a close look at what we've got here. Okay, this is the uh, main board and it is finished. Um, the difference between this and the last video was that this connector, this connector, this connector, and this connector have been soldered to the board. Now, one of the things it warns you about is with these two right here, they will tend to want to go in crooked. So you have to hold them so that they will stay right. And I did that. I used little guidelines on the circuit board itself to do that. These right here were a struggle to fit in because they had to go behind this and this, and they just fit. Uh, well, I forced them in there, and they made it. So that completed that board. Now the part that needs adjustment for transmitting is one, two, three coils. And what we do is we're going to spread out the coils on these until we get five watts out. Right now I measure one watt out. Okay, and I want five. So the next board that's assembled is the display board. This is the display board right here. Um, the display um, connects to the main PC board by putting little pieces of wire through here and uh, soldering all all 16 holes that are right there. Now there's a problem I ran into and that was that when I put the two boards together these lumps of solder were too big and they interfered with parts. So I got out my handy Dremel tool and got the uh, grinding bit on it here and mounted this in the circuit board holder and then with both hands on this thing to keep it very, very, very steady, I went on down the uh, uh, these. I blew it with a can of compressed air afterwards because I had created quite a few little metal fragments and I wanted those gone. Didn't want them in here. There's only one other part that goes on here and that's this right here. This is the little potentiometer that sets uh, the characters displaying on the uh, face of the thing. So you've got to, that's the very first thing you need to do when you turn it on because there will be no display, is very carefully turn this with a screwdriver until you see the display lighting up on the top. Now there are a few surface mount components on here that you don't have to worry about because they're already taken care of. The final board that you have to put together is this control board. Um, this has the volume control here. Oops, got it backwards. This is the volume control here. And then this is a rotary encoder that just keeps going around. This is a multi-purpose tool. It's got a push button on it too. And here are two more push buttons. And you've got to be very careful in mounting this. There's a spacer that goes in right there. And there's another spacer that goes in right there. And if you don't put those spacers in, it won't work right. So the way the thing plugs together, we're going to plug these pins into here. Okay. And we plug them in. And you look in the middle very carefully to make sure that nothing from the top board interferes with the bottom board and that's where I had to come along and remove their uh, shorten these because they were hitting the capacitor and uh, hitting these pins over here. Okay uh, now the next piece that goes on oddly enough is is this and this piece is designed to believe me just barely fit. 
Um, when you take the board apart, the, the circuit board comes with some tabs on it. You break them apart into these little pieces. And you have to be very, very careful to get these exactly right. And when this thing goes together, it will be one circuit board height. One circuit board height above this other board. Okay. Now we can put in the screws that hold the whole thing together. Now, this much you can do. I've got a combination of metal screws and plastic screws, and they are interchangeable. And for my big fat fingers here, they're a little hard to grab. So I'm going to put this in here, and I'll speed up this part. Now we check it. One thing we have to be particularly careful of is that this uh, wire right here does not touch this wire right here. This is positive voltage in and we don't want it shorting out against that. That's the closest it comes to shorting out. If you mount this diode here vertically, you're okay. I didn't quite mount it vertically. Now I was extremely careful aligning all of the parts. Now this right here is the completed radio and can be uh, made to work if you want. We'll just plug in power right here. And the first thing you normally get when you turn it on for the first time is uh, um, you get a, uh, a thing that allows you to set the band, yeah, and then of course set it to the correct band, 20. Um, this right here is volume. This right here uh, sets frequency, but this button right here puts it into the menu mode, and then you use this to set the various things. Alignment is very important, and it's got built-in self-alignment tools which uh, worked on on this one. My last QCX, they didn't quite work as advertised. Now you see these three tiny controls that are actually on the main board. Let me tilt that so you can see that there. This is where you adjust the uh, receiver, okay? And then way down in there is another setting that is a capacitor. That's the bandpass filter capacitor that you set. Okay, and um, now the parts that you need to adjust for volume, I'm sorry, for amplifier output are the, uh, uh, you can't see them in there, can you? There are some coils in there. There's one of them um, right there. Now, as it turns out, you can take the display board off and the radio will continue to work. So that is how you take this off. You can get to those coils and you spread the windings apart or closer together. He says wind them close together, so I did. It's easier to wind close together and then move apart than it is to wind them apart and then try and push them together. So I will do that in an upcoming video. But what I want to show you right now is that the thing does work. We can listen a little bit to 20 meters. We've got to put on the adapter here because these little radios always come with BNC and my entire system is constructed with BL259s. Okay, so let's get out of alignment. Okay, uh, let's see, we need a uh, speaker.
Okay, so it uh, works on receive just fine. Now let me show you what it looks like in the um, case. Okay, now the way you put this into the case is kind of weird. Um, you've got to take off of this bottom. Okay, and take this piece out too. Okay, this goes in first. This goes in first and it goes this way and it slides in like that. It slides in. Okay, now next we're going to take this, which is the control board, and push it in there past the other board. Okay, and then we're going to take this and plug this in here. Now, I cannot emphasize enough that you've got to be very careful during construction to have everything lined up. Okay, this piece, you line up, there's a lip on that side and a lip on this side and they go together like that. Now, the end pieces, and this is where you hold your breath to make sure you've lined up all these things correctly went in without a problem on mine. Um, there's little black screws. I'll just put a couple in here. These are just a son of a gun to put in. Don't lose them, there are no extras. And if these fall on the rug, well, it's a black part. Ooh. And we just lost that one. We'll find it later. So anyhow, you put this on like this. And you put the knobs on. And tighten them up. And you have a very professional looking case right there. Very, very nice. So the next step, now that I have the receiver lined, is to go ahead and get the transmitter power up to 5 watts. So there you have it. We have completed the kit build of the QCX Mini. We have aligned the receiver part. The one thing that is left is to move those coil windings around till we get it up to 5 watts. And I'm looking forward to that because I'm looking forward to using this QCX Mini. I have the reference station telegraph key right here that I'm going to use with it and I'm looking forward to doing a little bit of CW on 20 meters. So that concludes uh, today's video. Uh, tomorrow a couple important things happen. One, I finally get my dentures um, and uh, second, we'll find out what has happened to the airplane because of the leak. I've asked them to replace every inch of the fuel line in that airplane with new uh, because the stuff that is in there I don't trust at all. I would not fly that airplane with that uh, current uh, tubing that's in there. So, and we will set this thing up to get the maximum power out of it and see if we can't have a QSO on the air. So until we next meet, this is Dave, uh, KE0OG, saying 73.